In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to do an APA style graph, bar graph in particular. So this is the beginnings of it, of what it should look like. Um, but I'm going to take you back to how I started. So here you see I have my condition listed in one column. I have the mean listed in another column, and I have the standard error listed in another column. Now you have to know where to get that in your SPSS output. So if you go to the descriptives table that comes with the SPSS output, you see here it tells me what the conditions are in this first column. The second column is telling me the number of individuals that were in each condition. Then this column has the mean. So as I had circled in the um, SPSS lab, you see the self-immersed had a mean of negative 0.559 or 0.56 if you round to two decimal places. This is the standard deviation for that mean, and this is the standard error. Self-distanced, here's the mean, here's the standard deviation, and here's the error. Now what some people do by mistake is they go down to this post hoc multiple comparisons table, and they use the mean difference and this standard error. This is not what you want to present. The things that you want to present out of this table would be that the significance level. So this column gives you your p-value for your post hoc test or your pairwise comparisons. But here we're talking about making our graph from this descriptive table. So here I've taken the means and the standard error and I've put them into Excel. And this is the, the way that you want to put them in. And now I'm going to make a new graph. So I'm going to highlight these. Notice I have the first row is the names of what I, you know, have named these things. Um, and I'm going to then go to insert, insert a, a column or bar chart, just the first simple one. And this is what pops up, okay? This is not an APA style graph. One thing I need to do is I need to delete this title because when I get my figure into Word, I'm going to put a proper APA formatted figure number and title into um, for this for this figure. And notice that it, this uh, I call this a graph, but it, in APA we label it as a figure. So another thing I want to do is remove these horizontal grid lines. So I can go up here to add a chart element, go to grid lines. And here where it says primary horizontal grid lines, now see how they disappeared. Here they are, here they disappeared. In APA formatting, we don't want those grid lines. Next, what I'm gonna do is go, and I'm gonna see how I've highlighted the, I just kinda click on it and it highlights this, at the Y axis. And I'm gonna come up here to the little paint bucket not going to fill it. I'm going to go down to line and I want, no, I want a line. Sorry, I clicked the wrong one. I want a solid line and see how it gives me now a nice dark line. Before I had automatic, but I want a nice solid line because nothing was showing up. Next, I'm going to click on the Y axis and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to the paint bucket. I'm going to come down here to line and I'm going to put solid line. However, this time I also need to go to the color because I want it to look the same as the Y axis and I need to pick black. So again, it was automatic. I went to the solid line and then I went and changed the color to black. So now I have a nice Y axis and X axis. Another thing we want to do is change these bars to a boring old gray or um, color. So here it says automatic and it's blue. And APA, it's not that it's boring, it's just really the idea is that you're gonna be sending this off in theory to get published. And the publisher doesn't wanna publish a fancy figure in color because that would cost more money. So that's why you just get used to submitting it in, um, unless you need color to designate certain things, um, that's what you do. Another thing we wanna do so notice I keep going out here just to show you like that nothing's highlighted. I'm gonna click on this box that's on the very far outside because what happens is if you just copy and paste this, you're gonna end up with that line in your figure and you don't want that. So you click on that. And again, we come down to border and see how it says automatic. We wanna click no line. 
okay so again I was clicked on this border here made sure I was on the paint bucket I went down to border and it said it has a solid line I want it to be no line and see how that line is, is gone now so the final thing we need to do is we need to add in this SE so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our graph again So we'll go to chart design. Sometimes it pops up automatically and sometimes it didn't. It didn't pop up. So, so I again, I'll click out here. I clicked on this and this time it automatically went to chart design. I go over to add a chart element, go down to error bars, and I click standard error. Now these aren't what I want. So I need to go to my options. So here on options, I've gone over to this little graph. I wanna make sure I have both checked so that I'm gonna have a line that goes up and a line that goes down. Uh, I want a cap. I want it to have this little line here. If I didn't have it, that would go away. I want, I want it to have a cap. I want it to go up and down. So if I, I'll just show you if I was just to go this way, you just have a minus line. Or if I did this way, you just have one that goes up. I want it to do both. I want it to show me the plus and the minus standard error. Then I'm going to go down here. And again, I don't know where these numbers are coming from, where they're getting the standard error. So I'm going to click custom. Then I have to specify my values. So I'm going to specify my values as this column. And then notice I oh, it was see it just automatically was doing one and then I'm going to go here again I want to delete the parentheses in the one and I'm going to highlight those values graph notice it doesn't have a title here I remember I deleted that um, it doesn't have any conditions either so I probably want to go in here and I want to add an axis title so my primary horizontal axis um, you could name it anything condition um, I'm just going to name it condition for now because I can't remind myself exactly what this study was all about. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to go to my axis title for my primary vertical axis, my Y axis, and I'm going to um, name it wise reasoning. A reasoning perspective. So let's change this. It's basically what your IV and DV are, right? All right, so now I have a y-axis. I have an x-axis label. I have my y-axis line, or sorry, x-axis line, my y-axis line. Um, you could change the font as well. It's fine, it's a sans serif font um, is what you want basically. So now I'm gonna take my figure and I'm gonna copy it so I can go up to I'm just going to do a control C. I don't know where the copy function is here. I'm going to go to a blank word document and there it is. Um, then above this figure, not better. I guess I will, because it's an image, I'll go to format, position, and once you just give it a position, you can you can move it around. So I'm going to move it down a little bit so I can then, and I want it to be left aligned. So I'm going to, I'm going to have to move it over a minute, I'm going to type figure, where did it go? It's giving you a problem. You can also go back here, um, wrap text and do tight, and then it won't give you a problem. I'm going to go here, I'm going to type figure one, and then below I'm going to type a title, means and standard error for
error. So the title is very descriptive, nothing fancy. It's telling you what it is, and I put it in italics. And then you could, if you needed to explain more, you could put a note below. Um, technically, we could also put a little a little star here, and then you could explain below in the note that the star denoted that it was significant from these. But for now, this is fine. Um, you see that this y-axis lines up here nicely with that. Figure one, one more thing. Figure one needs to be bold. And then technically something that um, we'll worry about later is that this would also be considered an appendix. But we'll worry about that more at the end of the semester. So here I have an APA formatted graph that we've labeled figure one. You label your figures sequentially starting with number one. Same thing with tables. You start with table one and you move forward. Um, and then one of the things, so this was the data from the between subjects ANOVA. Now, if you go to the within subjects lab, just to show you that I, I provided you the output, these are the means I've highlighted what you need. I've given you the, the name of the conditions to put in that first column. These means would go in that second column and the standard error in the third column. And then you would just make the graph just like I did, except for you have different numbers.